It seems common, at least among people that I know, that they can fall asleep like right away almost instantly, but then four to five hours later, they're wide awake. You sort of mentioned depression. What else is going on there? What goes through your mind in terms of uh, how to handle that? So a couple things. One is they might not be getting enough physical activity during the day or they're getting too much, they're overtrained. If you train too much and too often, uh, you'll find that you can't get enough sleep and you're always tired. People that are doing tons and tons of miles on the road and then they're always exhausted, well, your body's just not recovering. Likewise with work, if you just work, 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 you're just burning yourself down. The rule of thumb from the literature is about 150 to 180 minutes per week of zone two cardio. So this is, um, cardiovascular exercise of any kind where you could have a conversation, but you're a little bit strained, you'd prefer to be quiet to keep it going. That will help sleep, the 150 to 180 minutes of zone two cardio and getting resistance exercise, you know, three or four times a week, you're going to be a much more fuel efficient, better sleeping, more focused system without question. The other thing is that many of the people waking up after four or five hours, were supposed to go to bed earlier. Remember, melatonin puts you to sleep, but doesn't keep you asleep. So many of these people might be going to bed at 11 o'clock, waking up at three or 4 a.m. going, ah, here I am again, when actually they need to go to bed at nine. Most people were, you know, evolved in under conditions where they went to sleep shortly after the sun went down. Every hour of sleep before midnight recharges them more deeply than the hours after midnight. Now there's this weird asymmetry in the way that our system is built in that we can push through fatigue, but it's very hard to make ourselves fall asleep. I'm not a fan of melatonin supplementation. Dosages are much too high. It's a hormone that interacts with the other hormone systems in the brain and body. I get really concerned about this, especially in kids because melatonin is actually the hormone that suppresses the onset of puberty. What's your evening routine, including supplements from like, take walk me through 5 p.m. until your, your lights out falling asleep. First of all, um, my evening meals are more laden with carbohydrates than they are protein. I generally will eat pasta or something that includes more starches because starches are known to actually reduce cortisol levels in the body. This is what, why we eat comfort foods. A lot of people that are on very low carbohydrate diets, they have to rely on a lot of sleep supplements or medication. So right around um, 8 or 9 p.m., I start bringing the lights down. In fact, I have a real sensitivity to the overhead lights because I'm so used to this pattern. So I start dimming the lights in the evening. I do keep my phone out of the the bedroom as much as possible. Temperature is the most powerful um, stimulus for wakefulness. Actually, when you wake up in the morning, it's because your body temperature is rising. So one thing you can do is you can keep the temperature in your home a little bit lower at night and just stay under blankets. We actually dump heat mainly through the palms of our hands, the upper half of our face and the bottoms of our feet. There's a special portals between the blood and the skin there. During the middle of the night, the best thing to do is to have warm blankets on top of you and be in a cold room. And then if you get too warm, you will just naturally in your sleep, you'll just extend a foot or a hand out. You've probably heard sleep with socks on, terrible idea. If I'm feeling a little too alert, I remember two things. One, the biggest peak in alertness actually occurs about 90 minutes before your natural to sleep time. They're buzzing around all day doing things, ideally. But then, right before their natural pulse and melatonin takes off, they have this peak in activity. You can do NSDR first thing in the morning if you ever wake up and you did not get enough sleep. I often wake up and feel, ah, I didn't get enough sleep. I'll do a 30 minute NSDR and I come out of that feeling terrific as if I got a full night's sleep. And I do this almost every day at some point. I might do it in the afternoon. Or if you wake up in the middle of the night and you're having trouble falling back asleep, I highly recommend doing this because even if it doesn't put you back to sleep, it's better than being awake and ruminating. Obviously, you don't want to drink so many fluids before sleep that you're waking up all night to use the restroom. The three things that really can help with the depth and uh, transition to sleep are magnesium, three and eight. What does this do? Well, it makes people feel a little drowsy and it greatly increases the depth of their deep and, and the amount of deep sleep. The other thing that is a really powerful um, supplement, which is wonderful, is apigenin. Apigenin is a derivative of chamomile. Now there's a third supplement, which is theanine. Your dreams will get very vivid. People who have night terrors or who have, um, uh, so who sleepwalk should not take theanine. Theanine, magnesium three and eight, and apigenin all trigger the activation of a, of a neurohormone, uh, excuse me, a neurotransmitter in the brain called GABA, 
which um, tends to shut off our forebrain. GABA, incidentally, is also what goes up if you have one or two uh, alcoholic drinks. The problem is drinking alcohol before sleep really screws up your sleep. Take them about 30 to 60 minutes before sleep, and most people report having incredibly improved sleep. Are they habit forming? Not that I am aware of. One last point about sleep, if, if you wake up in the middle of the night, turn on as many lights as you need in order to navigate around safely, but again, try and keep the lights low. And waking up once in the middle of the night to use the restroom is perfectly normal. A lot of people think, oh, I woke up, now my sleep is disrupted, my sleep tracking score, my recovery isn't good. A lot of people think they have insomnia when what they actually have is anxiety about waking up. And they, they're just concerned that they've heard all the terrible things that happen if you don't get enough sleep.